I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Fishing for Summer Flounder, Fluke Jigging from Shore Boat and Kayak, and you can learn more about the book at flounderbook.com. The rig used in this video has a blue frog bucktail, generally two to three ounces on this trip, tipped with uh, often a fluke strip or a gulp, and uh, one foot ahead of that is a gulp swimming mullet or a gulp grub, six inch or five inch, on a tsunami hollow teaser. It's a 5.0 Gamagatsu bait holder hook. We're fishing around an artificial reef off the south shore of Long Island in 85 feet of water, and that structure often attracts big flukes, especially uh, around August into early September. Okay, I'm fishing with my friend Joey on his boat, and we got out here real early, one of the first boats out on the reef, and we've got very little drift, um, no wind, and I'm staying down with a two ounce blue frog bucktail. map but it's a nice fish. So that's a real nice start, and that's the kind of fish uh, we come out here for, but uh, the, the next one's going to be a real dandy. These rod holders? Yeah. And there's a still image of that fish, and it hit the bucktail. All right, so you can see I've got my handheld GPS out. It, this is a big reef, like 35 acres, and I got a, uh, a couple of spots, one in particular, that I got with my kayak, and we're transferring those over sure. to the boat and uh, it's going to pay off big time and then I'm going to say more about that spot. Okay, you want to be watching Joey in the back corner. Don't, don't be looking at what I'm doing. Just, just watch him because uh, this is great. I actually think you get away with a little less weight on the kayak because it, this holds the kayak up. Oh yeah! Uh, I like that. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm just getting out of the water then. I'm just going to get out of the water. Yeah, I'm going to bring that. Oh, I like the looks of this. <laughs> oh boy, I like the looks of that. Yep, slow and steady wins the race. No, 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 no. That's going to be a big boy. Now, he's good. He's hooked well. You can see that. that over there. spins one more time around. No, you don't. Okay, that's eight plus. We'll get some good pictures of this guy. Oh. Nice. Oh, that may be, huh. There's your serious fluke, huh? Oh, and he came right out. So we waited, it was 9 pounds, that was his personal best at that point, and uh, he wants to release it. So uh, this is just wonderful to uh, see a beautiful fish like this go back.
All right, I usually post these videos in a timely fashion, but it just wasn't possible with this particular one. Um, so what I decided to do was hold it until it was basically the time that this fishing really gets going. And so I'm posting this in uh, early August. However, this uh, trip was a third week of August trip. But this fishing, as uh, I'm making this video and um, going to post it, this is just starting to heat up now and getting quite good. So this is what... Uh, we've got to look forward to for about the next month or so and uh, it's a look into what the fishing was back uh, the previous season when it was really going and, and this was just a spectacular trip and we caught a lot of nice fish and we threw back a lot of keepers and you can see we had barely any drift at all but you know this rapid jigging with the light tackle uh, yep. you know plenty of motion on the jigs the fish were just pouncing on stuff now as for the tackle, uh, Joey's using the rod that I've been using out in Montauk uh, this season and it's the uh, Tsunami Classic, it's the 7 foot H casting, rated 12 to 25 pound test line and uh, my rod is basically that rod except it's a little bit shorter, a little bit stiffer, it's a discontinued model. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is, um, if I didn't have this one, I would take one of those H's and cut a couple inches off the tip and probably just make this rod out of it. Um, but that, um, that rod for two to three ounces is perfect for this kind of fishing. And both rods have the Quantum Acuras. And um, if you've seen recent videos, uh, I've put power handles on those reels and it makes a big difference. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on people who've um, put those power handles on. They really like it. And both of those outfits are spooled with 15 pound test braided line. And the terminal rigs are tied from 25 pound test fluorocarbon. So while I'm dealing with this uh, small ling, Joey's hooking up a nice fish on the back corner. So you saw me messing earlier with the uh, handheld GPS. Yes, this is a 35 acre reef. Um, lots of sub spots on it and there's one spot in particular uh, I had the marks on my fish finder on the kayak and I wanted to transfer those over and it's been quite a spot for us because um, I first got on it because I was out in my kayak my friend Mike and his wife were out in their boat and uh, they on consecutive drifts had a nine and a ten pounder and I paddled when I saw the second fish come up I paddled uh, right up drift of them took a mark my next trip out with the kayak, I got a 10 pounder on that mark. And uh, so I, I brought the handheld out on this trip and uh, that's where Joey got his nine pounder. So certainly on this one little spot, you know, I, I know of uh, you know, two nines and uh, two tens. And uh, so, yeah, and that's the way this kind of fishing is. You know, they're gonna have their preferred little pieces of structure and uh, you know, if you put your time in on these places and you know, build up a collection of marks, uh, you're going to do quite well. But you know what? Even if you don't have a collection of marks, if you just you know try to hang around the edges, uh, yeah, you've got a good shot of getting some big fish. And there were some smaller fish mixed in this trip as well. Um, it was really excellent action because sometimes you can come out to these spots and you, know, you really have to work for your hits. But uh, that wasn't the case this day. There was a lot of action. There was a lot of quality. So was an excellent trip. So what I want to point out here is uh, 85 feet of water and it's seemingly taking forever for this rig to get to the bottom and it's because I've got a two ounce bucktail on there and uh, I always stress fishing with as light a weight jig as possible and when you do that um, you know the rig doesn't seek out the bottom like a rock. It you know falls at a more natural rate and you know if you can um, just use as light a weight as possible without scoping out, without having to keep letting line out to stay near the bottom. Uh, your rig's going to have a very natural look to yeah, it. And sure. that's why, yeah, you know, t it took a while for it to get to the bottom there. And the key to this kind of fishing, to be able to use light tackle um, and lighter weight bucktails in deep water, uh, is the thin line. Uh, over and over I have people say, oh, but I need so much lead to stay down. And my first question is always, well, you know, what pound test line are you using? And it's almost always something that's at least 30. Um, if you scale it down to 15, that is very, very thin line. It's going to enable you to fish with much less weight. And, you know, when you can fish with less weight, you can fish with uh, 
more comfortable lighter rods and really put a lot of action on the jig and sometimes you do have to go a little heavier you might have to go three four I gotta say I rarely have had to go to six ounces um, doing this kind of fishing um, but when you start getting up in those heavier jigs especially three four ounces or so a lot of the bucktails on the market uh, they're made for bass fishing. The hooks are, are too big for fluke. Um, the one, one of the brands that's real nice that I'm using today is the Blue Frog Bucktails, and they have the swing hooks. These things are made for fluke fishing, and uh, they've got really an appropriately sized hook uh, for this kind of fishing, yet on the heavier jig. So if you have to go up four or six ounces, uh, you still got a good hook for this kind of fishing, and that's why I'll often go with the Blue Frogs. So I mentioned that I now use power handles on these reels. Here's why. Pulling up a decent fish in the deeper water, the reel, oh, it almost feels a little bit underpowered, a little awkward with that little handle on there. If you put the Jigging World power handle on there, it's a huge difference. And I'll have um, a link to that in the description of the video. Oh, he's not even that big, is he? We'll see in a minute. Fish, but hmm, not the. Uh, oh, we are getting spoiled. Oh, that's a great fish, though. Got yeah. Yep. Nice bite. Blue frog. All right, we've got enough in the cooler at this point, but uh, we want to catch some more fish, so I'm gonna let this guy go. All right, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video, and I hope in the, the next couple weeks uh, you can get into this kind of fishing because it sure is a lot of fun.